Hello, good afternoon. Thank you all for joining me today uh, in this talk. Today we're going to talk a little bit about um, Open APIs, about the Spring Cloud Gateway, and I'm going to explain um, a problem we had and, and how I solve it using this, these technologies. Uh, but first, we are going to talk a little bit, just we all are on the same page about the different things. So uh, how many of you use or know uh, Open API or use it? So pretty much everyone. And and how many of you use Spring Cloud Gateway? OK, so you are in the right session. Awesome. Um, so yeah, and at the end, uh, we will see everything uh, kind of in action. So let me introduce myself very quickly. Uh, I'm Ivan Lopez, Iloman on Twitter. I am a JVM developer. I've been using JVM for a long time, mostly Java and Groovy. I am currently a staff software engineer at VMware. Uh, but even if I'm working at VMware, I'm not working at the Spring itself. But the nice thing is that the Spring team is on my Slack, right? So they are really, really close when something happens. I'm also the Madrid Group coordinator. I'm, I'm from, from Spain, from Madrid. And we are, the Groovy, we are the, the Groovy user group. We have a lot of talks there recorded, both in English and Spanish. Uh, if you ever come to Madrid and want to give, a, give, us a, give here a talk, uh, ping us. Um, we are also been doing, for the last six, seven months, joint talks with the Java user group in Madrid, because at the end, we know each other. We talk about the JVM. So I encourage you to, to join or, or find your, your own Java user group in your cities, uh, because it's a nice way to know people and to meet new people that kind of have the same interests uh, as you. And I am not a developer advocate. I've never been a developer advocate, but I like to give talks. So I've been in a quite different places uh, giving talks. So that's it. Uh, let's uh, start with, with Open API, uh, just to, to make sure that we are all, as I said, on the same page. So basically, you may know that uh, Open API is a specification, and probably you have heard about Swagger specification, right? This was the old name. Uh, until the end of 2016, it became a separate project. It's now, it now belongs to the Open API initiative, and it's under the umbrella of the Linux Foundation. And, and basically, uh, it's a way to describe how, uh, how to represent an, an API, an open API. It's um, how to describe, uh, consume, and produce RESTful APIs. It's basically that. And, and with an open API, what we can do is we can define endpoints, operation, methods, uh, parameters, the requests, the responses, the authentication, everything related to, to, the, open a, to, the, to the API we are, we are exposing. And one of the most important things about the, API, the open API specification is that it's programming language agnostic, right? It's not tied to any programming language. Um, and, and that's one of the main advantages, as we will see later, because you, you, can, you can do a lot of things for different languages. Uh, and, and with the open API, you can discover how, how the API works. Just taking a look at it. It's, it's readable. And basically, there are two formats to, to write open APIs, uh, YAML or JSON. But I think pretty much everyone uses YAML. I've probably never seen or just a few of them using, using JSON. Uh, uh, so what about Swagger, right? Because the name was there. So the difference basically is that the open API is the spec, and Swagger are open source tools built around the spec to do something with, 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 the, with the spec. Uh, so there are tools like the Swagger Editor. It's a browser-based tool to, to write and view the Open API. We have Swagger UI. You probably know about this. It's a, a nice way to have a, a HTML page with all your, your, your Open API, uh, all the endpoints, all the methods, all parameters. You can even make it um, runnable. If you point to, to your server, you can click on a button and send a request. Uh, there is Swagger Code Gen. There are, these are a, a set of tools to generate server stabs uh, and client implementations for different languages, just with the, with the API. And specifically about Java, I think there are in other languages, but related to Java itself, we have more libraries, the core, parser. There are libraries to create an open API, to programmatically consume it, to, to modify, to do a lot of, a lot of things with, with open API. So why we should care or why we should use Open API? Uh, so it's a standard widely used. It's used in a lot of different places. It has a huge user base. Uh, so it's baked by many big companies. And a lot of products offer their, their specs as, as Open API, right? Because it's, it's the, the de facto standard, at least. Uh, it's a stable. Uh, when, when, when they did the, the name, the, the rebranding from Swagger to, to Open API, they updated the version to 3.0, which is the current one. 
and it's considered, it's considered now stable, mature enough, uh, they don't change too much, so we can rely on, on, on that for, for describing our, our open APIs. As I mentioned, sorry, uh, we, can, we, we have these tools to generate servers and clients, so we can get uh, our open API and we can generate, for example, the backend server for our Spring applications with controllers and with all the POYOs and all DTOs and everything, and we pretty much only need to, to, to put the implementation there. And on, on, on the other side, we can also generate the client. So if you have an open API for a third-party tool or library or service or whatever, you can generate a client to interact with that from Angular, for React, from Python, for Spring, for Java. There are a lot of uh, generator tools for, for that, and it's really, really helpful. And, and yeah, as I said, it integrates with uh, many languages, and specifically, here we are going to, to, to talk about uh, Spring and, and, and Java. So we've talked a little bit about Open API. Let's talk now a little bit about Spring Cloud Gateway. But first, what is an API Gateway, right? So basically, a, an API Gateway is a proxy, something that you put between your client and your, and your backend and your services. And it sits in the middle of that communication. Because imagine this scenario. You have a, um, a, an application that relies, for example, of three different services. And if, if the web application needs to talk to one of these each service directly, it needs to know a lot of things. It needs to know where are those services, what happens if one of those services goes down, if there are network issues, a lot of things, right? So with, with an API gateway as a, as a concept, uh, you move that complexity from the client to the, to the server, to the backend. And, and for the client point of view, they only need to connect or know how to connect to the gateway, and that's it. And, and the gateway will, will take care of everything. If, if, if one service goes down, if you deploy 10 different replicas, if there are network issues, all those kind of problems will be handled by the API. So your clients don't need to worry about that. Uh, as I said, it's the single entry point of your backend services. And as it's there, you can apply cross-cutting concerns because all the traffic will go through your gateway. So you can put there security, rate limiting, monitoring. If, if you were in the previous session in this, in this track, the Sean was showing how to, how to use rate limited with, with uh, Spring Cloud Gateway. Um, so what is basically, now that we talk about a, a gateway itself, uh, a Spring Cloud Gateway is the API gateway solution from the Spring ecosystem. It's built on top of Spring Boot, uh, WebFlux, and Reactor. So if you want to use it, you need to go with the reactive stack. And many people don't like that or maybe don't need it. So there is an open draft uh, mail request from, I think it's last week. And basically, uh, a lot of folks from the community wanted to have uh, um, the Spring Cloud Gateway, but not based on Reactor and WebFlux, but based on Spring MVC. So there is now an open uh, mail request. And hopefully, in the next, probably next versions of Spring Boot or, or Spring Cloud Gateway, we will have an implementation based on Spring MVC if we don't want to go with the reactive um, path. So we can create with the Spring Cloud Gateway dynamic routing, define different routes to, to send traffic to one or one place or, or the other. And basically, this route matching works like uh, you, can, you can match anything on, 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 the, on the request. So you can, you can, for example, say or configure something. If my request matches this path, send those requests over there. And if uh, the request match this other path or this method or contains this header, send the request over there. Right? It's really, really flexible, and you can do a lot of things with that. You can apply filters uh, to put some common logic there. And as I mentioned, you have rate limiting, you have circuit breaker out, out of the box. So uh, if you want to go to the rate limiting stuff, you can put Redis, and, and pretty much it's done for you. You, you don't need to, to worry too much about configuring things. It will work. You just only need to do some kind of fine tuning to, to configure everything. But a lot of things there are for, for us to focus on, on, on solving our problems. And another nice feature is this path rewriting, which um, maybe it's some minor thing that you do. So basically, path rewriting means uh, I want to expose this, this endpoint from this service, but when I expose it on the, on, the, on the API, I want to expose it in another different path, right? They don't need to be the same. And, and we can do, and we will see how, we can do a lot of nice things with this uh, path writing thing. So uh, the, the basic things when you configure a, a Spring Cloud Gateway, 
uh, a route, you have three elements, the route, the predicate, uh, and the filters. Uh, the route is kind of the, building, the basic building block, and it has, it has an ID, a URI, and a collection of predicates and filters. And the route will match if all the predicates matches. Uh, a predicate is basically a Java function, a Java 8 function, functional interface, and you can match on anything on the request, as I mentioned. So cookies, header, host, method, path, anything that comes with, uh, or from an HTTP request, you can use it to match uh, that specific um, route. And then with, with filters, we have this, a lot of gateway filters, filters, factory, sorry. And we can use that to modify uh, the request and the responses before or after sending uh, downstream. So we can do, for example, uh, we can remove headers, we can add new headers, we can rewrite things, we can do a lot of crazy stuff. Uh, there is also this concept of global filters. So we can put, we can create our own filters or our own factories to, to basically do whatever, whatever thing we need that is not covered out of the box. And there are two ways to configure a uh, Spring Cloud Gateway. One, which is probably the most common used for, for everyone is the YAML configuration. And, and it works really good. And it's uh, basically, if you go to the documentation, uh, all, the, all the factories, all the filter of all the predicates, everything is configured or, or it's di displayed there on the docs using the YAML configuration. Um, and, but you can also have another approach, which is using the programmatic API. So with the programmatic API, you can do even more things because you have code, right? You, you are not like a static YAML configuration. You can do a lot of things at runtime with, with, with a, a programmatic API. It's not that well documented as the, as the YAML configuration, um, but the documentation is there. And once you start using it with your IDE and with some help there, it's pretty easy to, to use. And, and we will see with a few lines of code, you can configure a lot of, a lot of different things. So let me show you a few examples of, of configuration. So basically, these, these examples that I'm going to show you, you can copy and paste them to your application YAML, and, and they will work out of the box as long as you have Spring Cloud Gateway on, on your class path. So you have a route. Uh, everything is inside the Spring Cloud Gateway routes. You have an ID, some method, some, sorry, some name. Uh, and then you have the URI. That's the, the server to which you are going to forward all the requests that match, in this case, the predicate. So basically, for, in this example, all the get and post requests that I'm sending to my application are going to be forwarded to this example.org. Uh, you can, for example, as I mentioned before, with filters, you can add a header. So when, when, when you send a request, you add this X full header with, with some random value there. Or you can do this kind of, of the right thing, right? So everything that matches full, whatever, I'm going to forward that request to example.org. But in the right there, you basically are removing the full part. So when you, when you forward the request, you remove it. We will see then in, in an example, and you will see this in action, uh, because I think it's easy to, to see. But as I said, these are pretty basic examples, and you will find a lot of examples like this, just small code snippets on the docs. They are, they are very good. So we've talked a little bit about OpenAPI, what is OpenAPI, the spec, the tools around it, and a little bit about the Spring Cloud Gateway. So we are all kind of on the same page now. So let me exactly tell you the problem I had to solve with these tools. And basically, the problem can be reduced to something just like this. I just want to expose the open API of my application. That's it. So it seems pretty simple, right? But uh, you need to keep a few things in mind. What is really the open API of my, appli of my application? Because this is a gateway, and there are different services here, right? So if every service has its own open API, what is the open API of my application, the one I am exposing for my clients, right? Because all those services are private for, for clients. They only talk to the gateway. So is, is only the open API of one service? Uh, in that case, which one? Or, or if it's kind of a combination of the different, how do we group them? How do we select, OK, I want to expose these two endpoints from this service, and this one only, uh, and all of them from this one. So I need to combine them somehow uh, and expose only selected endpoints that I want, right? Because maybe uh, one easy thing is, yes, expose everything. Everything is public for, 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 for clients, right? But maybe it's not the case. Sometimes it's not the case. You have internal endpoints and you have public endpoints, right? 
So the, the problem is not that simple as I just want to expose the Open API of my application. It has more, more things there. So when I joined the team, uh, this was one of the first big tasks I was assigned. And, and this was the status when I joined. This is what they had. They had a Spring Cloud Gateway in front of different services. Uh, all of the services exposes its own Open API. And let me open here a small parenthesis. Um, is this API first? So we try to follow this approach. And, and for me, when, when, you, when you think about being API first, you may think basically two approaches, right? One is, OK, I write the code. I have my controllers. I wrote everything. And then I can put uh, the Swagger annotations on my controllers, or I can use a Spring project that I never remember the name to generate the Open API for me, right? So this is one approach, kind of code Open API. But for me, that's not Open API first because you are writing the code. And then you kind of generate your Open API. So uh, for me, it's the other way around. And this is how we do it. And this is what they were doing. And then we continue doing this. So when we want to add a new endpoint or modify endpoint or whatever, the first thing we do is we write the Open API. We submit a pull request, we merge it, and we generate a new version of the API. And using those tools I mentioned, the, the code generator generation tools, uh, we basically generate two jars, one for the server and one for clients. And then on the server side, we use that new version that we have um, released, and we, ha and we implement it, the, the pieces there, right? But we have all, all, all around. We only need to put the logic, because all the schemas and everything that you define on the API, these generator tools will create the POYOs and the DTOs for you. So you have there. You don't need to do pretty much anything. Just put the logic there. So this is, for me, this is open uh, API first. So uh, closing the parentheses, we were doing that, and we wanted to continue doing this uh, API first approach. And we wanted to define different endpoints, as I mentioned. Some of them are internal, and we don't want to expose them, those endpoints, but we want to make other endpoints public. And finally, uh, when I joined, all this kind of logic was configured statically in YAML in, in, the, in the gateway. So when, when someone on the team wanted to add a new, a new endpoint and wanted to make it public, they needed to deploy a new version, and then they need to modify the, the gateway manually, well, sending a new, a new pull request to, to modify, or for example, adding a new route for, for this new endpoint that is made public, right? So it doesn't, uh, it didn't work. Very good. We were not adding new endpoints every day, right? But we wanted to make it better. And we didn't have the open API of, of our application. So the requirements I have when, when I started this were, were there, uh, this. As I mentioned, we want to expose the, the thing that we call the public API of, of my or my application on the gateway. Um, then we want to aggregate from different services. We want to pick different endpoints and only expose those in an aggregated way, and only the ones that we explicitly mark as public. So by default, everything is, is uh, private. And if we want to make it something public, we mark it, and then it will be exposed. Uh, optionally, the teams needed the, the option to rewrite the path. So for example, one, one, one real example, we have a, a service called vulnerability service. And from that service, but from that service point of view, we have a, an endpoint call slash reports. So when you are calling directly the vulnerability service and you get slash reports, you know that those are vulnerability reports. But when you call that endpoint from your gateway, slash reports probably be, doesn't, doesn't mean anything because you can have vulnerability reports, you can have inventory reports, you can have provisioning reports, you can have a lot of different reports. So we wanted to expose that slash reports endpoint from the vulnerability service on the gateway in another path. For example, slash vulnerabilities, slash reports. Right? So this is what I, what I talk about when, when I say rewrite endpoints. Um, we also wanted only to expose the schemas related to public endpoints. If, if I have this endpoint public and it uses three different schemas, I want to expose this, them. I need to expose them, because if not, the Open API won't be valid. But if there are more endpoints that I'm not exposing, all those related schemas don't need to be exposed, right? They are internal. And uh, we can also, or we wanted to rewrite tags. You know that when you define an endpoint, you can associate it a tag. And then when you use the Swagger UI, all the endpoints with the same tag are grouped together. 
So this tag rewrite is the same. Uh, um, every service has different endpoints with different tags, but we wanted to expose them in different tags that make sense from the, from the client. And finally, we wanted to make this everything automatic. We wanted to update the public API on the gateway automatically, and we wanted to make or create the or delete the routes on the gateway automatically. So if we deploy a new version of a service and one endpoint now it's public, it should be added automatically to the open API, and a new route should be created automatically again to, to, to basically send all the traffic to that endpoint, right? So that's what I wanted to do. And basically, this is what I did. Uh, I, I did a one-week spike to make sure if this was possible, because I wasn't sure. Uh, we were and we are using a Spring, a Spring Cloud Gateway open source, uh, the open source edition. And by that time, so nowadays, this feature is available on the Spring Cloud commercial. But by that time, this was a year ago, it wasn't available. And even nowadays, if you want to use this feature, this Spring Cloud commercial feature, uh, it only works on Tanzu application service and, and for Kubernetes, right? So even with that, that approach didn't work for us because even if we deploy our services on Kubernetes, we wanted to keep everything agnostic. We want to be able to, to, to not depend on deploying on Kubernetes because local development is easy. We can deploy on premises. We can do pretty much anything we want without depending on deploying on Tanzu or deploying on Kubernetes, right? So that approach wasn't working for us. And the last thing I, I did and, uh, was taking a look at those libraries I mentioned, all the Swagger libraries, because there are a lot of things there uh, to read and write and transform and do pretty much a lot of things with, with open API specifications. So uh, yeah, and the final thing is using, uh, as I mentioned before, instead of configuring, configuring everything on the YAML, I use the, the Spring Cloud Gateway programmatic API to do things on the fly. So this is the solution I, I created. Um, basically, we wanted that every service owner make an endpoint public when they want. So the only thing they need to do, if this is an example, they need to add just an extension. So OpenAPI allows this, and I created this extension, xbmw public. So if you add that extension to an endpoint, then the gateway knows that this endpoint is going to be made public. And that's it. You, you don't need to do anything else. You deploy a new version with this new extension there, and this endpoint is going to be made public for you. And optionally, as I said, you can rewrite uh, a path when you want to expose it. So here we have the, the example. I have this slash reports on my service, my vulnerability service. But when I expose it, I want to expose it in a totally different path, because it makes more sense for, for my clients. So with that XVMware rewrite header that I made up, you can, you can do it. And the last thing, write tags. It's the same, it's optional, you don't need to. But if you have different tags, uh, you, you, you see there are products, artifacts, and artifact versions, uh, you, can, you can put the write header, uh, sorry, the write extension there and say, yeah, everything, all these tags are going to be exposed or rewritten to inventory, which is here, right? So any endpoint related to tags uh, named um, products, artifacts, and artifact versions are going to be exposed as inventory. Because we wanted to make all this endpoint grouped together in the, in the generated open API. And what about the gateway itself? So that was on the, on the service side, right? We wanted to make this very simple for service owner to, to make endpoint publics. So what do we need to do, or what I did on the gateway? So I have a, a very uh, a, a basic empty skeleton of the open API with just um, the title, the content, um, the contact information, and, and basically empty schemas, empty endpoints, empty everything. And the gateway uh, to get the open APIs pulls the services every five minutes. So we were discussing here different approaches, right? Because uh, we wanted we, we started saying, yeah, so if I deploy a new version, we can, for example, send a kind of a callback to the gateway, say, hey, I'm available. This is my API. You can use it. Please get a new version of, uh, updated. Uh, we were also discussing all our services uh, talk to each other using Kafka. So we also were thinking, yeah, we can send a message to Kafka, uh, and the gateway will get the message, and it updates. But uh, the gateway is not connected to Kafka, and we don't want to do that, because gateway it's for, for HTTP requests. 
So at the end, we started with this approach. Yeah, we said, yeah, we can wait up to five minutes to make an endpoint public. We don't worry about that. We don't need real time for that. So it's fine to start with this approach, poll every five minutes and, and rewrite and, and redo everything. And if, if it doesn't work, we will figure it out and we will find another solution. Um, Spoiler alert, it works per perfectly. It's been running for over a year, and we haven't changed this approach. Uh, and basically, this, the only thing that the, the gateway does is it gets all the endpoints for, for the different services, the, the APIs. Uh, this is a static list on configuration, and, and every five minutes, it gets the new version of the APIs, and then it filters, transform, and combines. So basically, it gets the public endpoints, the public schemas, the public tags. It's basically grouped together. And, and combine all of them in, in one open API object in memory using these, these uh, libraries. And in the last step, it cr creates in memory the, se the, the final generated open API, right? So it's pretty simple. And, and it, this is created on the fly every five minutes uh, on the gateway. And, and then the only thing you need to do is basically expose that open API, which is something like just it. You define a new, a new endpoint, v1 api.yaml, you call your service, and if it returns something, OK, 200, and if not, you, you return a 404 in case there is nothing configured. So that's it. You only need to ask the, the service for, 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 the, um, for the generated API. Right? In all those steps, I mentioned filter, transform, and combine. I was getting in, in, in memory some information about the routes because I needed to, to reconfigure the, the gateway on the fly, all the routes. So how did I do that uh, to refresh dynamically the routes? It's pretty simple. You create a route locator bin. This is from a Spring Cloud Gateway. And the important part here is that it's annotated with refresh scope. This means that I can send a refresh event, and, and, and a Spring in memory refresh event. And every time I send that event, this code will be created. I will have a new bin created for me. And, and basically, here in this code that I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to reconfigure the routes. So what I, what I do when, when, when this code is executed is basically, please give me the, the find, find the gateway routes. And then for every route, we are going to do something. So where do I get those routes? Basically like this. In my open API service, I said, give me the API routes, and I convert them. Right? These are internal in-memory things that I created. Uh, so let me show you a, a real example with, with some values there. So these are the things that I keep in memory when I'm processing the open API and I analyze the public endpoints. I keep a list of these things I call open API route, which is basically the original path on the, on the server, so v1 reports, the new path in case this is rewritten, the method get, and the URI to forward the request. So this is, for me, this is an open API route. Uh, server path and, and server on the gateway. And I convert that route to a gateway route. So I need to set a route ID. Whatever thing you, you, you can use as a name. I decided to use the, the method, uh, the HTTP method, underscore, underscore, and the path. The gateway path is the path in which this public is going to be exposed. So that's the public uh, path. The regesp is, in this case, it's the same because we are not rewriting. Um, we don't have, uh, sorry, path variables. Uh, in the next example, I'll show you. So this is a regest to match uh, on the route. In this case, it's just the plain string. The, the internal path, uh, well, and the order to make sure that the, it has the right priority. Uh, but you can have uh, path variables. So you can have, for example, this one. I want, uh, I want to, to create a new public endpoint. In this case, it's v1tp and the ID. And that uh, request will be uh, sent to the provisioning service to the V1 target platforms, target platform ID. So I write this, and I convert this to this. So basically, you, you can see there that now the regesp has a group to, to match all the path there, all the, all the uh, target platform IDs. I call it ID1. If there are more path variables, it will create ID2, ID3, ID4. You, you don't worry about the name, right? This is dynamic. This is programmatically. You are not going to use uh, that regular expression anywhere. You as a, as a human, I mean, you don't need to read it. It's just put there something, and then you can use on, on the right path, you, you see there, uh, $ID1. So we have converted the routes, and then how we generate that configuration dynamically, these six, seven lines of code, which is basically the same. 
I define the order for the priority because when, when a route has a, a path variable, so basically a star, uh, you need to make that less priority than, than the other one because if not, it will match everything and, and, and it will break things. You match on the path and the method, and then on, on, the, on the filter, you, you rewrite using the, the regex that you created, and then finally on the URI, you put the, the URI on the server. So let's see with a real example with value. So this is what we had. We converted that to the, that gateway route, and this is the route I create dynamically on the fly with those values. So basically the same, right? Order path v1 vulnerability reports. That's the internal path. Method get. And in the filters you see, please rewrite v1. Sorry, vulnerability reports is the, is the external path. So please rewrite v1 vulnerability reports to v1 reports and send the traffic to my vulnerability service. That's it. And with the other example, the one with uh, a path variable, uh, it's pretty much the same. Uh, the only thing is that you have now a regesp to, to do the matching, or Spring Cloud will do the match for, for you. Uh, and basically, that's it. So uh, let me show you this in action, because I think it's simple to, to see this in action. Let's see if the mirror works. OK. So uh, I have my application up and running. So this is my, my gateway. And you can see here, I have this base API. This is the skeleton. I Let me close this. I showed you before. So it's, it's an empty base open API. So you have some content for uh, REST API, contact information, paths, an empty, pa empty list of paths, empty schemas, empty parameters, basically empty everything. So I get this, and then when, when I process everything, I'm going to completing the path, the schemas, and parameter. And finally, I, I convert this, in this the, the, the memory representation of this, into the final open API. And these are two. Uh, you, can, you need to put here the list of, the, of your services, the ones you want to get, the, the Open API. So instead of having all of them up and running, I have here the, basic, the, the Open API, and I have there here, uh, basically, with Python, I'm, I'm serving the, the directory. And, and for this provisioning service, what I'm doing is I'm saying, yeah, every traffic to the provisioning service, send it to this one, because I have provisioning service running localhost 8080, so we can see the difference and we can send, we can, we can basically demo how to, to forward the, the traffic. So uh, this is, you can see here, uh, port 9090, my, my gateway is listening on this port, v1 a API, so this is the endpoint I show you on the slides, and it's basically the, the basic or the base file that I show you. Here, uh, we have um, the actuator endpoint running on port 8181. And in this path, actuator gateway routes, you can see, and this is very helpful for debugging uh, problems, um, you can see the, the, the routes. And now there are no dynamic routes, because there is no open API yet. So what I'm going to do uh, here, sorry, uh, here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make some public, some endpoint public. So this is a huge endpoint from the verification service. You can see almost 2,000 lines of, of specs. There are a lot of endpoints here. Uh, so I'm going to make this, if I know how to do it, these two endpoint publics, right? The post pipelines and the get execution graph, uh, execution graph ID. Uh, and in this, in these both two cases, I'm only making the, the endpoint publics, right? I'm not writing. I'm not doing anything else. So I save the changes, and instead of waiting five minutes until this gets executed, I can force, uh, as I said, the, the refresh. I can send this this uh, post to the refresh endpoint on, on the actuator. So this will trigger everything. You can see the, the endpoints have been written. Uh, and now, if I reload this, you can see, magically, we have open API. So we can copy here. This is Swagger Editor I mentioned before. And you can see here, uh, this is my, and this is basically the, the Swagger UI. So you can, you can generate only this part, so the right side. And you can put this uh, documentation on your server or whatever you want. This is a stati static HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. So you can put it anywhere. And you can see I have here my, my, both of my endpoints that I made public and, and all the schemas. So you can see, for example, an example. You have the, the, the schemas. And, and there are, uh, sorry, there are a lot of them. 
uh, with a lot of schemas. And all these schemas that you can see here are here are displayed because they are related somehow to these endpoints. And what we can we can check now is the route because we have created two new routes, right? So you can see I reload it and I have two routes. Uh, so um, post v1 pipelines uh, every time I get this, send it to the same endpoint in this service, which doesn't work anymore, uh, and it's an internal v, uh, URL, and the same one for this one, right? So you can see that here I'm not using yet the provisioning service I have running in localhost 8080, so we cannot send any request. But you can see that just making those changes, defining an endpoint public, they are public, and they can be consumed by, by third parties. So what I'm going to show you now uh, so I have here my, my provisioning service running, so I can send a request, uh, for example, this one. To my port 8080, okay, this is not to the gateway, the gateway is on port 9090, directly to my service. I can do that because it's running on localhost, but, but the clients can do that because they only can talk to the gateway. So yeah, I can send a request, and as you can see here, uh, it, it's here, localhost 8080 and HTTPI, it works, and I can send uh, a request to get uh, the tar one specific target platform, right? Uh, and it works. Uh, but I cannot send this request to... So this one, uh, target platforms, doesn't work, 404, because there is nothing exposed on the gateway yet. So what I'm going to do now uh, in the API, or in the open API of the provisioning service, I'm going to make this endpoint the get target platforms public, and I'm going to rewrite it to a slash TP, and the same for the uh, target platforms ID. I'm going to expose it as TP and, and the ID. So same as before, I save the changes, and instead of waiting five minutes, I force the refresh of everything. So now, uh, let's take a look before, before refreshing this. There are two tags here pipelines and execution graphs. So if I reload, there are more. So I can copy this, I can paste it here, and you can see now there are two new endpoints. So these new endpoints are now public, and they use the, the rewritten name we, we decide, right? We wanted to expose this endpoint for the clients in a slash TP, and not in the original target platform or whatever path it, they are. And if we go back to the routes, reload, <laughs> We can see now uh, the new route. So um, the, the first one, to get all the target platforms. So this is, OK, any request sent to the gateway to v1 TP, forward that request to v1 target platforms on localhost 8080. And the other one, anything that matches this thing, so slash v1 TP something, rewrite that to v1 target platforms the same some, the same thing, the same ID, and forward that uh, to, to the same localhost 88 in this case. So what we can do now, uh, you can see, for example, this one. Um, this still fails because I'm not using the right uh, endpoint. I didn't expose v1 target platforms on my gateway. What I did was using TB. So now the request, the request works. And if you go here, uh, so this was the previous request I sent directly to the service. And this one of, on the bottom are the new ones sent through the gateway. So you can see, for example, different information. You have um, they were sent from localhost 1990, so my gateway. Uh, this, the, this is the path on, on the servers that matches the request. X forwarder 4 because I'm running everything on localhost at uh, the port. And you can even see here some, some more additional um, headers or information. So trace ID, span ID, parent span ID. So basically, this is for, for distributing tracing. So we add those headers uh, on the gateway so we can trace everything. Uh, every, so basically, we can trace this request to every service it reaches at the end. Um, and yeah, we can say the same if we put here some other um, uh, Parlant for ID, it's the same. This request goes through uh, my gateway, right? And 
as I mentioned before, so if we go, if we go here to the, um, to the schemas, I can find target, sorry, here on the right side, target platform. And you can see there are seven. So target platform provider, architecture, kind, params. There are a few of them. And these are here because one or any of these public endpoints need that schema or uses this schema. So if I go back now and remove this, remove this, save changes, again, force the reload. Um, reload again. So basically, they, they are going to disappear. You can see now that there are only two, right? Uh, because they was, they, these are necessary for, for the other endpoints. So uh, this is what I mentioned before when I was talking about making only public the, the necessary schemas and paths and tags and everything, right? Because now these target platform endpoints are private, so you don't want to expose any additional information uh, for them. And the last thing I want to show you, uh, you, ca you can see here in this URL these options. Well, you can import a URL, you can put a, a, a file, you can, instead of copy and paste, you can export it at, as JSON if you want. But there are two nice options here. So generate server. Let me close this. You can see, you can generate the, the, the stuff for the servers for, for any things. So you have spnet.core, go server, JAXRS, CXF, DI, Jersey, Red CC. You have calling server, Micronaut, Node.js server, Python, and you have here one spring. So you can download. And this generates on the fly a new Spring Boot application. It's pretty old. It's 2.1, 2 I think. But the important part here is that you have, oh, here on the model, you have POYOS for everything, right? So any schema that is here, you have a class. So I can open, I don't know uh, which one, target platform param, for example. So you can see you have a POYO uh, with, with the schema annotations, with uh, Jackson annotations for doing the, the marshalling of, of JSON, and, and everything, and, and also the examples we put on, on, on our Open API when we create it, they are put here on, on code. So you have all of this for free. So even if, if the code is not updated that much, you have everything. And here on the, um, for example, this one, execution graph controller, you have the stuff I mentioned regarding the controller. So you have a REST controller. It implements the API. You have even login. And you have basically here the, the path. It, it takes some path parameters. And you return basically the example we had. So you need to get rid of this and put the real implementation there. But you don't need to worry about anything else. And the same if you go for the client, you have even more options. You have C Sharp, you have Dart, uh, TypeScript, Angular, Python, Scala, Java, JavaScript. So you can create uh, a lot of things basically for free. And instead of using this approach of going to basically to this Swagger editor online, you can use the, the generator tools, the command line tools to, to generate this. And those tools also allows you to customize the output, right? Because maybe you don't want to generate everything exactly as they have the site. So you can, you can um, put different things. So you can modify some templates they have, and, and the generator use those templates to generate the right version or, or the, the, the right code that, that you want. And then you, want, you just um, put it on a jar, release it, uh, and, and basically that's it. You can use it. So let me go back to the slides. Oh, what is it? Sorry about that. Here. So just uh, to wrap up, um, basically, I solved the problem I had in, in kind of uh, one week. So basically, it took me more than one week, right? Because you, you need to basically to write the right test, make sure everything works, some corner cases. But after this spike of one week, one week spike, I knew I was able to solve the problem. Uh, this has been running on production for over a year without any problems. Uh, nothing com no one complains that when I make a, an endpoint public, it doesn't work. Uh, and nowadays, starting like uh, a couple of months ago, another team is now using this same solution for exposing their APIs and their service in another different team, not, not just my, my team. I was able to reuse both the Spring Cloud Gateway 
open source solution we were using, but now I am using the Swagger tools to, to deal with all the Swagger things because my first approach was basically reading the YAML with a snake YAML and trying to figure out what was there, and that was a mess because basically it's YAML and it's all lists and maps, so you cannot do anything. With the right library, you get path, you get endpoints, you get extensions, you get everything, right? Uh, this is platform agnostic, as I said. Uh, we didn't want it to couple to, to Tanzu or to Kubernetes, so we can just seen this uh, running uh, on my laptop localhost. We can deploy this on premises. We can do anything we want. Uh, Sprinkled Gateway is awesome. I didn't know the project before joining the team, and basically, Sprinkled Gateway now it's on my top three or five Spring projects, right? Uh, and it, I, I only show you a few things, but it has a lot of things that you can do and really crazy stuff. If you want to learn more about Spring Cloud Gateway, now just after this talk in this same room, so in like 10 minutes, uh, my colleagues Abel and Marta are going to talk about more different use cases about the Spring Cloud Gateway. They are going to show you different examples and different nice and, and cool things that you can do with, with Spring Cloud. So if you are interested in the Spring Cloud, I encourage you to, to stay in this room for, for the next talk uh, because they are going to show you uh, nice things. And also, as I said, the documentation is pretty good. They, they have a lot of filters, a lot of um, routes, a lot of predicates to do a lot of things. And uh, everything is on YAML, and some of them are in Java code. So once you know how to do that, uh, and with your ID, you can, you can pretty much do anything you want with, with Sprinkle Gateway. And at the end, uh, I was able to solve the problem. We have now the public and dynamic API of, of our application, of our services, aggregating everything, exposing that to the clients. And, and basically, that's it. So this is my contact information. Uh, my DMs are open. Uh, that's my email. So now, if you have like 30 seconds, uh, please go to that URL, bit.ly spring io dash dynamic dot APIs, or scan this QR code. It's an anonymous Google form. I'm going to tweet about the slides and things, so don't worry. Uh, it's an anonymous Google form. Uh, with just four questions to send me some feedback about the talk. If you like the talk, let me know. If you think the talk was crap, let me know. You can say anything you want. It's anonymous. It's only four questions. I'm not going to be offended, so say whatever you want uh, and send me some feedback. And I think that's all. We have like three, four minutes for questions. So thank you. <laughs>